of the country, as you know. When someone we know gets sick or has passed, <laughs> that's the way we do it. Have you noticed it? If we hear the word passed, we... we <laughs> and then we go on. I was seated next to a woman on the airplane and not a month or two ago, she was 70, and going to see her sister. I'd never met her. And I said to her, how many siblings do you have? She said, I have two sisters, and then we had a third one. But she passed in 1941, and both of us went, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know what I think it is? I think it's just a little show of respect, just to stop for a minute and do like this and do this. Well, in our area of the country, when somebody gets sick that we know or has passed, we take over food. Have you noticed it? We take over food. You can buy that food. You can go to the deli and the grocery store, get something great, hire somebody to bake it, but put it down in the big list of important things for life. You get a lot more credit if you make it yourself. <laughs> you can put it on your grandmother's platter, but the women in the kitchen will say, I know where she got that chicken. I'm telling you, it works out that way. <laughs> and I make only one thing, and that is small little seven-up pound cakes. I make them by the dozen. I'm out of town, something happens, left brain takes it over. And not long ago, got up one morning and heard that a friend of ours was sick and went to my freezer and my pound cakes were depleted. I did not realize I was out. He said, I've been taking them to a lot of people. A lot of people been sick. I said, well, I didn't know they were gone. I got to get a pound cake made before I leave town, honey. Go to the grocery store and get my ingredients. He said, I'm trying to get to badminton. I said, well, it's just a few ingredients. He said, I tell you what, I can get there and get it and still get to badminton, but you make sure... I can go through that express lane, no problem. We don't go to the grocery store together anymore because I frankly don't care what things cost by the half ounce. <laughs> so I made up the list and he left. Well, y'all, I waited, I waited. He didn't come back. I thought he's gone on to badminton. And I thought, now where could he be? I was getting ready to call the grocery store and I heard the car pull in. He came huffing up the steps, had two sacks and more sacks hanging on his arms. He just glared at me, started putting stuff down and said, I'll get some more out of the car. <laughs> I looked in the first sack, that was a pound of margarine and two gigantic bottles of vanilla flavoring doling out a half teaspoon of time. It would take forever <laughs> to get rid of these two gigantic bottles of vanilla flavor. And in the next sack were three dozen eggs. I said, they had a special. I'll tell you, they have had a special. I didn't need but five eggs. And I just said a dozen. In the next sack was a big old thing of shortening, two of them. And in the next sack, two more, 12 pounds of lard. <laughs> We could fry fish for everybody in here. But in that fourth sack, I found my list. And I'd like to step out of the kitchen just a minute to tell you something. Left Brain is a smart man. He went to Duke University on a basketball scholarship, played basketball for four years, and graduated in the same four years. <laughs> Then he went to Carolina and got a master's degree and a doctorate. He has over-degreed himself. <laughs> but I don't care how many pieces of paper you frame and put on the wall, if you have a left brain, it's going to kick in on you. And it kicked in on him about the third aisle of that grocery store. <laughs> I'll step back in the kitchen. I found my list. And in my eagerness to make sure that he could get through the express ring, for probably the first time in my life, I numbered the items. <laughs> I 
Number one, a pound of butter, no problem. Number two, large bottle of vanilla flavoring. I had two of them. Number three, a dozen eggs. This man has a doctorate degree. Number four, a big, big tub thing of lard. I could hear him coming back. I looked down at number five. Said a five pound bag of sugar. I knew he was coming in with 25 pounds of sugar. And number six was a five pound bag of all purpose flour, 30 pounds of flour. Now, I believe in accepting things you can't change, but I also believe in hounding things sometimes. And then sometime I let it ride. And this time, y'all would have been proud of me. I let it ride. I put that list behind my back. He came in again, <laughs> plopping down sugar and flour all over. Bam, 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 bam. Gets it all down there and says, one more trip. <laughs> I went back to my list and looked, and number seven was a bottle of 7-Up. <laughs> I don't want that big bottle because if you're going to make one cake and you just use it, it'll be stale by the time I get back. I told him I wanted a six pack of those medium sized ones hanging. So I knew he was coming back in with 42 bottles of 7 Up. And in a minute, there he was. I had just cleared a space for him right here. Back it up. Put them all down and turned around to me before he left and said, Well, obviously, they wouldn't let me through the express lane. But you know what? He got all the way out in the hall and came back and he said, for the record, I figured out what I had done. But by then she was ringing up the 7-Up. <laughs> and all these people behind me in line were laughing. And I got to get to badminton. Don't tell anybody. I said, I won't. Three days later, I went to the grocery store. And a woman that was checking me out says, I think I checked out your husband a few days ago. I said, I'm sure you could have. She said, that was an interesting order. I said, let me explain to you. And she was from this area too, and this proves it, because I said, anytime a friend of ours gets sick or has passed, and both of us went, <laughs> said, I make a pound cakes and we take it over. This woman said to me, is there an epidemic? 